Hello, and welcome to Tonight with Tarek. We have a great show for you, Matt. Uh, even though it's a sad night. Yes, it's a very sad night. And to discuss the sad night, let's bring out our panel. My very good friend, Aldi. Welcome back. Where you at? Good to be back. Yes. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Despite, in spite of everything, you know, we have to keep going and fight even harder than ever now. Yes, and that's why I've invited presidential candidate Allison McCoin. What's up, Allison McCoin? Madame Allison. Hey, America's great right now. Yeah. Well, that's why I wanted to make this show about women because it's <laughs> tough right now for women or a lot of things are happening and uh in order to make that possible i wanted to invite one of my favorite women uh mm -hmm. woman although there are too many to say but she is an incredible actress producer comedian all around badass fish word of endearment word of endearment please ladies and gentlemen welcome my very good friend janela santos <laughs> God, hello. Thank you for and having me again. Finally. Well, you were here on our first show. You were a panelist. Now you are the special guest. Oh, wow. And you are VIP. You are the mother of the villain theater. No. Uh, we're you all can do okay. whatever you want. Like, if you want me to leave, I'll leave. No! <laughs> I want more of you in my life. Trust me. Girl, your name's in the title. You can't leave. Oh, oh. that's right. That's right. I keep forgetting. <laughs> Anyways, like I was saying, today's show is about women, mostly how we like controlling women as a society. A few hours ago, it was announced that Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away. And, well, who can tell me why she was so important to women <laughs> and to all of us, essentially? Allison, presidential candidate. Yes, basically, she was just an amazing Supreme Court justice that fought for equality. Um, she fought for it before it was popular. Um, she was one of the first women to be on the Supreme Court. She has described her first days of being on the Supreme Court as being a kindergarten teacher, having to literally explain to people like, oh, no, 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 women don't feel that way. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was all dudes. And she's and now just, it's going to be all dudes now, no? No, well, we still have Sonia. Um, oh, sorry, Sonia. Sonia, yeah, the first, the... Hispanic Heritage Month, the first Latino uh, female Supreme Court justice uh, nominated by Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. she, she's gonna be there for a minute and she's pretty good. It's just, she needs support. <laughs> Unless yeah. she gets the Rona and then we're we're back to square one. Oh, well, let's hope not. Well, it's been not great even for women. It's been really crazy. In improv, you guys mentioned JK Rowling and how, you know, she uh, has complicated thoughts on trans women. And um, I don't like what she said about trans women, but I kind of like that she's canceled because I never wanted to see that fucking movies anyways. <laughs> and all my friends are like, when are you gonna watch it? Are you gonna watch? And now they're like, don't watch it, don't watch it. I'm like, don't worry, girl, no. <laughs> that was my childhood. It gave me an entire set. It. I love I it. I've been watching it once and I kept falling asleep. You know, it was with my ex and my ex like, what did you think it was about? It's like, I could make out like a little boy goes to conversion camp, meets other gay boys that are magical. It doesn't work. It's so gay. Maggie Smith is there. I only remember Maggie Smith. I never watched um, Harry Potter at all because it was demonic. And my parents, you know, they're Jehovah's Witness. So um, I, I totally missed out on all of that. And I'm happy. Me too. Well, look, I'm afraid now we didn't absorb any of J.K. Rowling's phobias. Thank God. Anyway, but I never got into the fantasy stuff. I never did Lord of the Rings. I never did Star Wars. None of that. I was all like, you know, real shit. Like sex in the city, super real, you know? I mean, I kind of like Star Wars for the aesthetic. Um, I think that it just had like one of the cutest sets ever. And this one scene where it's like red Imperial guards and they're fighting. I don't even know what happens, but I just love the way it looks. Yeah, well, <laughs> Japanese culture is beautiful, especially when white people take it to space and then film oh, it. I love it, gorgeous. <laughs> um, anyways, also going on for women, WAP. Everyone has a lot to say about the WAP. And I don't have any problem with the WAP, but 
like, why are people my age? I'm 30. I'm a millennial. Why are people talking about WAP? Like, I grew up on Madonna masturbating on stage in 1990. Sure. Uh, the extreme sex sexualization of Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera when they were babies. I mean, 17 oh year old. Like, when You're talking I about a bunch of blonde white sex women. videos, parents, all, everyone had a sex video. We watched it. It was, and now we're outraged. So it's it's always the same fake outrage coming over because they don't stop it. They don't stop it. They just complain about it. I don't know. What do you got to say about the WAP? Well, it's not the WAP just that. Won, um, and broke records. So uh, there's more people that are enjoying it than the ones that are not. So WAP all the way. Fuck it. Listen, haters gonna hate. Racism is real. And misogyny is real because listen, those, those earlier it. ones, Madonna, Britney, Christina, bunch of white blonde ladies. Mm -hmm. Now but we have a bunch of like proud people of color saying WAP. And now we get all freaked out because we'd like to hold people that are like, especially of color, especially women to a higher standard than we hold everyone else. Yeah, like I think like a lot of like older women, they would like, they would watch Madonna or even Lady Gaga and be like, okay, they're a little crazy, but they're innovative, they're avant-garde, you know? But then they see Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion, they're like, oh my God, how vulgar. It's like, mm, why? Megan Thee Stallion is iconic. And I want to start with an insane factoid, okay? Because she is gorgeous. Her body is ridiculous. And she, if you didn't know, she was shot in the foot by Tory Lanez. Now I want to go around the virtual room and ask everybody, do you know how tall Tory Lanez is? Just guess, guess, guess. Uh, Tarek, guess how tall Tory Lanez is. He carries around a gun. He's probably like five foot four. Okay, Al. Five three. Allison. You gotta go with four ten. You don't shoot someone in a foot on purpose. It's because you're I too tell, short to aim. I can tell that you guys have unlearned a lot of things because Tory Lanez is five three. Tori yeah. Lanez is literally 5'3". Do you know how tall Megan the Stallion is? They call her a stallion because she's 5'10". Um, her, tits, her tits are six feet tall. Her ass is 6'7". All right. And she is basically uh, the statue of you know, fertility, like a gorgeous mother guy kind of woman. That's that's what they bought. That video, that's what it is. It's so regal. And, oh, my God. You know? It's and kind of incredible how beautiful they both are. And I think that's like, you know, poking some other people in the wrong way, you know? Yeah. And, and Megan talks about going to school, uh, to having her grandmother tell her, you better get a college degree. You better, you know, be a well-rounded person who can be independent. And people are always gonna be mad about that shit. If you don't complain and you get your shit done for yourself, you're gonna have fucking haters and they're gonna shoot you in the foot, apparently. Apparently. Well, <laughs> Who's heard the radio edit? Mom was a rapper. Got the what? 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 She's Megan the Stallion. I want to be a reborn Megan the Stallion or Cardi B. Yeah. Right. If you're listening, God, if you exist. Anyways, let's take a break. When we come back, Al D has a little presentation for us about one of our favorite gals and queen. I'm eating Korean food. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. It's a cash night. It's all villain. We're gonna be back with some Britney tea. channel i'm your host Tarek. i'm with my good friend al d and we're also with my very two other good friends <laughs> presidential candidate allison mccoin do you want to come in and join the chat yeah yeah yeah. are you busy are you oh okay okay I'm and of course our i was just making sure democracy happened okay jeez <laughs> 
I'm and introduce back. our queen mother, the legend. You don't have to do man. All right, Aldi, take it away. All right, so we have a lot to cover today that I'm going to try to cover in six minutes. So unless you live under a rock, you've by now heard of Free Britney and what is going on with my sweet American dream, Britney Spears. All right, so I'm going to take you guys through a little bit of what's going on from when it started in 2007 until where we are now. All right. And then at the end, we're going to play a fun game called Guess the Real Fake News, Britney Spears edition. Okay. So let me share this sheet right here. <laughs> John Stamos. <laughs> oh yeah, I was Googling, I was like, I think I know who that is, but anyways. Eternally right, so looking. Uncle Jesse. The Fareed Britney presentation by Al D. So as we all know, Britney Spears in 2007 went through a really rough time and it split up in three parts. The breakdown, the hospitalization, and the comeback. Now, during the breakdown, I, I'm not going to post pictures because we've all seen them and I hate bringing these up, but she shaved her head. She had, had her fall from grace at the VMAs. She locked herself in the bathroom with her youngest son and would not give him up. She had erratic behavior uh, from a British accent to dating random paparazzi that she met on the street. Then she was placed in a 5150 hold. Uh, there are actually pictures of her in the stretcher and they're horrifying. Um, there was a public hospitalization, the whole media shebang. It was terrible. I cried. I literally would go to school and people would be like, did you see what happened to her? She's like over. And I would literally cry in the middle of like social studies. I am not kidding you guys. If people who know me from high school can vouch for this. And then came the conservatorship. Okay. Now I want to make it clear that during the conservatorship, and we'll get into what a conservatorship is in just a second. Right after the conservatorship, literally two months later, a uh, womanizer came out. She was doing TV show appearances. Uh, she uh, had the circus album come out. She went on a world tour, a circus world tour. Now, this is someone that apparently was mentally unstable so badly that she was in, in a conservatorship, right? Which brings me to the next point, the conservatorship. What is it? Because we throw that word around, but like not a lot of people know what it exactly is. So it actually is a law in the US that allows a guardian to manage the financial affairs and daily life of a person who is physically or mentally constrained and unable to perform basic tasks on their own. Now, does this sound like someone that should be touring the world, releasing four albums, which all hit number one, by the way, and I bought all of them, obviously. Um, had TV show appearances, was in How I Met Your Mother, was a judge on the X Factor. All of this while she is apparently too mentally constrained and physically unable? No. Her dad claimed, yeah. Her dad claimed that she had early uh, signs of dementia. I did a little bit of research. If you're in your 20s and you have early signs of dementia, your life expectancy is about 10 years from when you get diagnosed with said dementia, young dementia. Yeah, Britney that's is super not rare. That's not something common at all. That's some Aaron Hernandez shit. Yeah, and someone with dementia could do this. Never. And this? Never. Dementia could never. Dementia and could never. Not only do those things, but then not be freaked out at some point because where am I? What time is it? Exactly. People with Look, dementia can still function, but they just like, wait, who are you? When is they this? Can, they can, this is literally throughout these 12 years. The first picture is 2008. That was, I kid you not, two months after she got out of the hospital. They had her in front of the cameras, getting awards, giving speeches. They had her in 2012 doing the X Factor gig. And then in 2017, that picture is from 2017, the last one, doing a whole 10 minute performance at the Billboard Music Awards. Like, it's just, now it brings us to 2019, okay? So Brittany was getting ready for Domination, which was her Vegas residency, and it was gonna snatch my wig. I had tickets for February 23rd, 2019. Yes, wow. I did, I did. Oh, wow. This is the promo for it. They did a whole event. Like they literally shut down Las Vegas to have her announce the show. It was like, it was insane. So early January, 2019, Brittany posted on her Instagram that the show is canceled due to her dad being very ill. And this is where it gets shady. She disappeared for three months. No social media, no paparazzi pictures, nothing. It was like the earth had swallowed her. Now keep in mind, this is one of the most known people in the whole world. <clears throat> No matter if she's already, you know, into her late whatever and her career isn't at the peak, 
she's still the, one of the most known people. Disappeared completely. So that's when the fans started to be like, okay, where the fuck is Britney? Now, in March of 2019, she is pictured leaving a mental facility. Mind you, this is a one-star mental facility in California. I Googled it. It was It's like where... I, and I'm not saying she should be treated differently, but it's not where you would put Britney Spears in. She revealed in a court for statement. Safety, for the safety of your portfolio. He, exactly. I'm, but I'm here's thinking, an asshole, thinking like an asshole, you know what I mean? She was put there against her will because she drove her car to in and out without her permission. Bitch, what? Can we sink in? She, was, she drove to in and out without permission and her dad locked her away because she refused to take any more medication. Oh my so God. That, yeah, when those court documents leaked, it began the birth of Free Britney and the fans started to really get involved. Um, but with that, the birth of conspiracy theories that I'm not gonna get into because honestly, like, you know, people are saying like, oh, she, it, she wrote call 911 on her makeup. Like if you zoom in, you can see like, it says whole- I saw it. It didn't. It said call nine one one, and another one said help me. Girl, <laughs> <laughs> was this? <laughs> then another one said like fuck Christina. I saw <laughs> it. What? No, she would never. <laughs> Dan, I'm losing faith in you, real fast. She's like who? <laughs> who? That girl, remember from when you? No, were Brittany like, has always been kind to everyone. So that is true. She really has. She never really said shit. She's never There's been no problematic. Good. She's always been a sweetheart, and honestly, throughout her shit, she she did, she did pretty well. She came out of it. She she then got into the residence. She made more money than she ever did. It's kind of crazy. She kind of became a robot after that. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and you never well, saw her kind of yeah. like real or more like she was always kind of like okay and just keep oh another residency oh another album oh okay you know you're like fuck but um all of this now um it, it gets even shadier because they're trying to do these zoom meetings because of everything going on the last zoom meeting that she was um supposed to have it was a, a huge one and her wi-fi didn't work so she couldn't log in and therefore the meeting was postponed Britney That's Spears wi-fi went out Bullshit. He has a phone then. Your phone has 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 computers and technology yeah, and cell phone data. A doctor that was supposed to testify again, um, for her favor of her mental being, saying that the, that she's okay to function, yeah. died like two months before he was supposed to testify. And then hey guys, um, I don't know if you're gonna get into this, but what's up with her family? He's like they control all the money. They speak like that's all they care about because they speak of like her, of her like a robot. Yeah. And uh, the the brother was on like the internet the other day defending her and saying, yeah, whatever. But he's sitting in this fucking amazing house. And I'm like, but who bought that house? You know, but like everyone seems like they don't do much, but kind of just manage Britney. And yeah. that's fine without the family agreement, but she should be the boss. Yeah, exactly. Um, and now to, to wrap up, because I, again, there's so much, we can do a whole episode on just this, but I just wanted to give you guys who are not familiar with what's going on. Conservatorship abuse is actually not just for Britney, but for everyday people. Um, so many people get caught into them. And once you're in a conservatorship, even if you made one mistake and they put you in it, it is so hard to get out of. There's people living with autism that get put into conservatorships um, and are basically restrained from anything. So look into it. There's a lot of information. A lot of elderly people. The yeah. rights we take away from people very arbitrarily mm -hmm. is scary. Yeah. All it takes is the wrong person and the wrong situation and you're fucked. That's why but ableism is bad. <laughs> All right, let's do our favorite segment. Guess the real fake news. But this is the Britney Spears edition. So Britney's net worth is $200 million. True or false? It's more. False, false, false. False, mucho más. Right? Partially true. And that is because they have drained this woman of all the money she earned. She is estimated to be $550 million worth. Her net worth is 200 million, but all she has access to is 59 million, which yeah, it sounds like a lot, but it is budgeted 
There was a story that ran her concierge at a hotel. She could not afford to buy flowers for her hotel room because of the budget they have her in. Yeah. Bitch, Next. no. She gets whatever she wants. She's paying for it. Period. I'm Baby just... One More Time reached number one in every single country it was released in. True or false? Oh, my God. That's probably oh true. Oh, my God. Hit me, baby, oh. one more time. True. Oh, oh no, no, no. Every single country was released in, I think, 45 countries. It, every single country went to. She was 16, a 16-year-old doing that. Incredi incredible. And that's right before people, like, that's what people bought fucking CDs. Yep. Right in the transition. I oh, bought that. That was the first CD I ever bought. Yeah. Yeah. Brittany is an unproblematic queen who deserves a world. True or true. false? True. True. If you say false, get the fuck out of my life. Get out. Unsubscribe. Yeah. She just it. really likes her That's peasant cool. tops. Just leave her alone. Oh my God. And what's up with Kanye? Why isn't he in his conservatorship? Literally. He's a man. He's a man. He Not that I think he should be, but no one's even mentioned it. And then no one even yeah. talks about the fact that Britney Spears works all the time, but it's, she doesn't manage oh, any of her yeah. shit. Like Lady Gaga manages her shit. Beyonce manages her shit. You know what I mean? She deserves to do that for herself. Oh, Al, she, at what point did Britney's mouth change because it changed it did what do you yeah think it so there is actually another conspiracy theory about that there was a woman who went anonymous on reddit saying that she was under conservatorship she lived in, in california and that she was being forced to get a cosmetic uh, procedure and because she uh is in the conservatorship she couldn't say no now obviously it's, it's it's a conspiracy theory but it matches woman in california how many conservatorships are there in california and the the whole she's constantly getting her mouth and her teeth worked on and fixed. Uh, her nose is contour. I've, exp I've I've studied it. The yeah. nose is fine. It's just, but yeah, I mean, if I had a two hundred fifty nine million reconstruction, babe. <laughs> Don't <laughs> yes, Brittany alone Don't like say my that, Terry. No, no, no. Anyways, thank you, Aldi. That was an amazing segment. Hashtag free Brittany. Thanks so much. Um, we love you, Brittany. I love you. You're my mom. Uh, my sisters won't let me like get, like they remind me all the time. Like, right? Right? Brittany, I'm with you, girl. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna be right back. Janela Santos, Al D'Amico, and presidential candidate, Allison McCoy. What's up? Hey. All right, well, our very special guest, Janela Santos, has a few words for us. Um, I don't really have too much to say. I just think that, um, isn't it insane that it's been six months of quarantine? We're going into seven months of quarantine. I think it's absolutely Fantastic. You know, for somebody like me, uh, Scorpio, uh, I'm very reserved. I'm very private. And so quarantine has been great because the club that is in front of my apartment shut down, baby. And I didn't have to make a single phone call to the city. It's just shut down all the time. They came back for one day to do like a live stream. <laughs> they were very, very loud. And I called the cops and within five minutes, baby. No. That's the good part, you know? I mean, 100%. 
fuck the police, fuck 12, defund all of it, get rid of the Constitution, burn it and start <laughs> it. Allison, Before you do that, Allison, to the club. Not all of it, there are some good our, bits. Our Constitution needs to be completely eradicated, okay? So during the day, you know, when I'm not doing comedy, um, when I'm paying the bills, I am, I'm a tutor. I'm a tutor for, you know, kids of all ages, but, uh, you know, usually between fifth grade and, and ninth grade. So I'm really good at like adding, subtracting, multiplying. Mommy, stop. <laughs> but also <laughs> I'm getting a chance to relearn a bunch of things, right? Because I was a terrible student when I was in school. When I, <laughs> when I hit eighth grade, I was like, this is too hard. You know what? <laughs> and then ninth grade, I had to start at 725. My brain doesn't start till 725 p.m. So <laughs> needless to say, I was not doing well. But the other day I was tutoring this girl. She's from Germany. And then she lived in London and now she lives in Miami. So she's like very like she doesn't know anything about like U.S. history. On top of that, she's a fifth grader and she's like very childish or whatever. So we're going through um, Roanoke and Jamestown. We're, we're learning about all of that. And her mom's like, I can't even pronounce it. How do you say it? Because she's like, very like, she's a mess. But we start reading about Jamestown and Roanoke. And it's like, when the English settlers arrived at the, the camps, the, and they give like a quote, like only 20 to 30 houses were in the settlement. And I'm like, do you understand that there were people here before they came? So right here, it says that there were 20 to 30 people. Now, I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes and take a second. You're in your bed. It's nighttime. You're cuddling up with your teddy bear. And all of a sudden, you hear a knock on the door. It's the English. And they are telling you that you need to leave your house. Now, that is what the Native Americans had to go through. Do you understand? When they say that they settled here, they didn't settle here. They stole the land. All right. And she's looking at me like, I'm telling the whites. I'm 10. I'm 10. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, let's learn about Pocahontas. Okay. Let's read it. Okay. So this English man, do you want to know how old the English man is? Like, I don't know. I'm like somewhere around 27 to 35 years old. Let's keep reading. Okay. He went ahead and married Pocahontas, who was a child. Can you imagine being 10? How old are you? 10? 10 years old. <laughs> imagine if tomorrow you had to marry a 35 year old man. That's mean. No, it's not mean, it's disgusting. And that's what Native Americans had to go through. And that's what women throughout history have had to go through. And you are a woman, so promise me you will be great. Let's keep studying. And so yeah. I'm, uh, I'm teaching this girl, but effectively I'm traumatizing her, you know? And I think that a little bit of trauma is always great. I mean, if I didn't have the trauma of uh, being a raised Jehovah's Witness, uh, being fat all of my life and getting bullied all of my life. Can you imagine how full of myself I would be? I feel like God said, all right, I've given her everything. Now I'm going to make her fat. I'm going to make her fat so she has a storyline, so she can have a story arc, you know, so she can have that part where she hates herself and then she'll find acceptance, all that good stuff. So I feel like it's our duty to engage in the civic process. When I was a kid, I was very much like, Fuck this. I don't know anything about the government because who cares? Nothing's going to change anyway. Uh, and you know what? I was right. But yeah. also, also, as you get older. My attitude now, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I think it's my attitude now, too, because I have totally gone Marxist. And yeah. I am like, I'm sorry. I, I haven't told my dad because anytime you bring up any. My dad was like, you know, the thing about Trump and Kim Jong-un is that they really have their perspective. And I was like, Fidel who has his perspective. What do you think about that? <gasps> and he just loses it. You know what I mean? Like if you talk about Fidel, 
he's the only one that people have ever, you know, the only politician that has ever made people suffer. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. Palestine, perfectly fine. Oh yeah, I oh, mean. I had a Cuban ex and he would downplay Palestine all the time. Oh my God, what do you, what? The it international was, community yeah. doesn't even recognize that one. Y'all got free admission to America. <laughs> It's absolutely insane. So we have to do a lot. We have to do a lot of unlearning, you know? Um, like, just get a U just go to YouTube and start watching videos because you need to do some unlearning. Like, I've been fine in quarantine because I have my boyfriends. I have Hulu. Hulu is a difficult, difficult boyfriend. Uh, to talking about shit that I don't care about, you know, just uh, is giving me advice that I would never take. Netflix, Netflix is like the fuckboy boyfriend. He's dirty. He's been around. Everybody has had him. And you don't want to watch it, but girlfriends just dropped and you're doing unlearning. You know what I mean? So you gotta watch it. HBO, however, HBO mm -hmm. is that boyfriend that won't make you his girlfriend. He is smart, rich. He wears... Um, leather shoes you know uh he has an apartment in Brickle, like Tarek I, <laughs> and I he, he, back now. yeah he refuses to talk to you he refuses to date you um oh, so I have plenty of boyfriends you know what I mean it takes you to nice restaurants HBO style you know oh yeah. my god A HBO would take us to like Michael's Genuine and like I wouldn't have to go half seas or something but like <laughs> I could get a whole dozen oysters for myself. You know, the way that I really- I'll buy you some oysters. Oh my God. With my Brickle budget. Yes. <laughs> but- um, Are you buying oysters for people? Oof. Oysters are an aphrodisiac. It is true. Oysters are weird. Oysters are weird, Allison. They're weird. Not an aphrodisiac. Also, I think it's kind of mean how you cook them a lot of the time. You just cook them alive. You don't kill them first. Mm -hmm. That is bad. I mean, it's bad. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> anyways, anyway. <laughs> but that's you pretty have much. A Hulu. Yeah. Me? Yeah. Like a Hulu type. <laughs> What? I missed it. What? Wait, weren't you saying like the the, the, the streaming service types as men? Like there's yeah. a Netflix guy, there's a HBO guy, there's a Hulu guy. There's a Hulu guy. I already said it. He's the most difficult one. He's always telling me shit that I don't want to know. Always getting me uh, shows with ads. I'm not about that. He's difficult to navigate. I mean, his <laughs> interface is garbage. You can never find your continue watching. Oh my yeah. God, what is that? What is the playback feature? Like, what? That's the thing about the Netflix guy, he's convenient. He's always there when you want oh. him. You know? He's always giving you suggestions you don't want. Yeah. He always asks you and I say like, are you still watching? <laughs> You're like, yeah, bitch, I'm still watching. Did I turn you off yet? No, therefore I'm still watching. Get down there. That's what, that's, that's not what it's I think it's <laughs> Uh, Anyways, guys, we're running out of time. Any final words, Ms. Santos? I think um, we need matriarchy now. We need to defund the police, abolish ICE. Um, you know, unlearn as much as you can. Read The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. And listen to black people. Listen to, voice, listen to black and brown voices. And vote, vote, vote. Yes. On that vote. matter. Presidential Vote? candidate Swain, what you got to say? I gotta say, RBG, we love you so much, but we can't do anything about that. If, if, if I could fucking raise her from the dead, I would. That's not real. So we all need to vote. Vote like your life depends on it because it does. Oh my God. I don't care if, you, if they're not your favorite choice, vote for them anyways, because otherwise we're gonna die. Also, this lovely administration that we have right now. Um, there's this thing called the census that we fill out every 10 years to determine a lot of things like federal budgets, um, electoral seats per um, state, uh, congressional seats per state. But they've done this thing that's so wonderful for 2020 
They took that registration date from December 31st and they moved it all the way up to September 30th. They have time so, for that, but they're not signing checks. No, 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 no. So please make sure you and everyone you know has filled out the census. That is how you get money to your community. That is how you get representation to your community. You do not need to be a citizen or, or documented or anything like that. This is literally just a who is here yeah. type of a question. And it doesn't trigger it doesn't trigger anything for like people who are undocumented, right? Yeah. No, 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 right? So no fear. Yes. Yeah. Any final words, Al D? Yes, as a fellow DACA recipient where my life literally depends on this election, please vote and vote for whoever is going to bring more human rights uh, to our country. Uh, and if you ever need an example of someone that depends on that, just talk to your boy and his family and I will literally uh, tell you my story and what's at stake for me and my family here and a million other people as well in this country. So just vote and get informed about everything and use things like this to get informed about the smaller cases too, because yeah. yes, we care about her, but we also need to remember that there are people that don't have that kind of influence that are in similar situations. So let's just use those examples that we have out there and get inf you know informed about as much as we can and just not be shitty. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and that was it. That was our show. It was all about women today. So vote for women, okay? with women in mind, because there's no women running, but, wait, Kamala's running, not that I- Yeah, yes! And you know what? Anyway, Biden can have a stroke any day. All right, hashtag vote, hashtag free Britney, hashtag free Palestine. I love you people. See you next month, Tonight with Terry. Thank you, everyone.